Hi and welcome to my video today where we'll be looking at how to remove a background in Procreate. Using the eraser and manually erasing a background can be a time-consuming and meticulous task. It requires precision, patience and a steady hand and that's really where Procreate magic comes in. In this video, I'm going to share a few game-changing techniques that will revolutionize your background removal process so that you get clean edges and a crystal clear background. Don't forget to hit that like button now and subscribe to my channel for more Procreate tutorials. All right, let's dive in and conquer those backgrounds. Let's start off by importing the photo that we want to remove the background from into our Procreate artwork. Select the Actions tab or the Wrench icon, tap Insert a Photo and select the photo that you want to use. Here I have a photo of a woman listening to music on her headphones. It's a very dreamy atmosphere which will go well with the background. You can see the image is placed on its own layer, which means it is isolated and I can edit it without disrupting anything in the artwork. I'm using the transform tool to enlarge the image so that I can really clearly see what's going on and remove that background accurately. First select the selection tool, which is the S-shaped ribbon icon, and you'll see there's various options, automatic, freehand, rectangle. I'm going to start off with automatic to begin with and what you do is you tap areas of the background and you will see it selects it selects areas of that background and by dragging the threshold to the right keep your pencil on the, on the canvas and drag drag it to the right and then it selects more of the area in the background more pixels this makes it quite easy to select a large area at once and you have a bit of control over how much to select. If you drag it too far to the right, you'll select too much of your image or too much of the area you don't want to remove, so you can drag it to the left. I'm going to drag this to the left a bit. Oh, that was too much. All you do to undo is simply tap the screen once with two fingers and that'll undo that last action. Done it again, so let's go undo. There we go. Right, and now I'm dragging it to the left just to get a more accurate selection. And you continue tapping areas that you want to add to your selection, which you will remove later on. Okay, I've mostly selected the background using the automatic selection tool and now I'm going to have a look at what's left for me to remove. So I click on my layer, tap on my layer, I select clear and you can see what has been removed from using that selection process. Now I'm going to just get rid of the last little pieces around the figure by using the freehand tool. I'm going to carefully trace as close as possible to, to the figure, to the clothing and around the edge of the hair and isolate the area around the figure in order to clear that as well. This is just another quick way to, to easily remove unwanted pieces of the background. Now I want to get rid of the line that is the edge of the photo. I'm just going to tap to create that boundary. Tap on the side here and then rejoin my shape at the bottom. To clear that, tap the layer and select clear. 
Now I'm going to edit final areas of the background, especially in parts of the hair where there's still detail that I want to remove. I'm using the automatic selection here in order to get rid of some of that flat color. Editing hair can be quite difficult because of the many fine strands, um, but I do find that the automatic selection tool helps a lot uh, with keeping those details intact. Okay, we've now removed the background from our photo so that we're left with our figure, our subject matter. And if you select or untick the background color layer, you will see that there is a grid pattern on the back. That means that it now has absolutely no background and you could essentially export it as a transparent PNG to be used as a standalone object in any other kind of design. For now, we're simply going to place our subject on our background. So uncheck our layer one with our lovely orange, swirly, dreamy background. I'm going to use the transform tool to just resize our figure and to place her in an interesting position. And now I'm going to duplicate my subject, the figure. Select duplicate layer and then I'm going to drag that layer underneath layer one. I'm going to do this because specifically here I want to create a layered effect with a pattern over her face. I'm now going to make sure my top layer is selected or the layer I want to edit and then select the adjustments icon. Select hue, saturation and brightness and I'm going to adjust the saturation of that top layer so that she's got a more orange glow to her which complements or is more harmonious with the orange background. I'm also going to just spend some time adjusting brightness, saturation and hue so that that subject looks as though it is part of the background and it's, it doesn't look as though it's just been stuck on top of it. Next I'm going to use my eraser tool and I'm going to erase that top layer. I've adjusted the opacity of my eraser tool on the left to be quite low so that it doesn't completely erase my image as I work on that top layer. As you can see as I'm erasing my middle layer, the lovely dreamy orange background comes through the face and I'm just going to see what the effect of this is. Now I'm going to tap on my middle layer and I'm going to gently erase some of my middle layers so that the base layer starts shining through and her face is slightly more visible. I like having the pattern imprinted on her skin but I'd also like her features to remain quite clear and so that's why I'm removing some of that background patterning on the middle layer. And then I'm going to remove some of the patterning on her lips for clarity and structure. Right now I'm going to select my top layer again and my eraser tool and with the opacity quite low once again I'm going to start erasing some of the clothing or some of the texture of the clothing so that once again the background shows through. Just very softly removing some of that so we get that lovely pattern showing through on her clothes and also working in to the edges of her hair so that it softens and it feels like it is part of the scene. Now I'll spend some time just refining areas that I think need to be softened and areas that need more clarity. And there you have it, removing backgrounds in Procreate has never been easier using these fantastic techniques we've explored today. Thanks for joining me on this Procreate background removal journey. I hope you found these techniques helpful and inspiring. 
Hit like and subscribe now to stay updated on my latest content and watch this next video all about tracing in Procreate where I'll share valuable tips and tricks to enhance your digital illustrations. Don't miss out.